the earnings show, you know, looks like for the first time signs of a real potential breakthrough. What's your take on the timing of a real turnaround? Um, you know, we're, this is this is one of those one quarter at a time, <laughs> um, and, and we are making we are making positive progress. Um, so so we're going to take a step at a time, and and I feel good about where we are. Our software business seems to done to doing very well. Our hardware business is starting to turn, uh, and getting more and more in the closer to the profitability areas. Our IoT business and our, uh, the QNX, which is in more in the automotive business. They're also, you know, going the right direction. So, knock on wood, everything seems to be working fine at Q3. We're going to get to all those points, but I want to start on software. You did make significant progress towards your $500 million software sales goal. What are the chances now that you actually exceed that? <laughs> let's, let's just get me making it first. It hasn't been easy, as you know. It's been a lot of people throughout the, year, throughout the entire last nine months that's been doubting whether I'm on the right you know, medicine or not, or whether I'm, 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 I'm smoking the right thing or something like that. So <laughs> let's, let's just get to the 500, uh, and, and I, I feel good about doing so. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and you know, we, we're growing all in the right area. We're going in recurring revenue. We, I mean, things. Again, you know, one of those quarters that actually everything came together as we planned. Okay, so once you get there, say you hit this $500 million sales target, how do you continue to grow? Well, we see you making more acquisitions, more software as a service companies. Um, I, you, know, uh, you, you know, organically, once we have digested all the acquisition we had made, um, and uh, we, we have a pretty strong platform now, and both in, in, in technology, product offerings, as well as the customer base, and, and I believe in the sales force. Uh, so we're working very hard in really executing. Um, so the next lake of growth is most likely less on acquisition, not, no, not none, but less on acquisition, but more on really growing the efficiency of the business. Um, so that's where I'm expecting we will start seeing um, some of the IoT growth uh, and some of the, you know, the QNX, which is in the auto industry today, and broad, you know, broadening out to medical industry. Those are things that's going to happen, uh, also helping to the growth. So, so I'm, I'm not going to rely completely on uh, on acquisition. So turning to hardware, before we get to cars, you sold about 700,000 handsets. That was a bit lower than some analysts had estimated. Are you changing anything about the PRIV strategy? Or how is that strategy evolving based on what you've learned so far? Um, no, I think the strategy so far early, um, we launched it on November 6th. The entire November, we were operating in four different countries. Um, and the response has been encouraging. Um, so we are planning to roll out in 31 countries in the next three months, or in the next two and a half months. So um, th th there is no strategy change there. Have in, you in the handset business, from... I'm not really looking at volume. I'm looking at margin. Okay, so have you gotten oh, any sorry. interest Go from ahead. Samsung? Have you gotten any interest from Samsung in the hardware business? In, in terms of, in terms uh, we of, use their know, screen. <laughs> I'm not quite right, sure. In, uh, interested in doing potentially more work with Samsung, more partnerships with Samsung? Yes, um, we, um, uh, not so much on the hardware side per se. Um, using their hardware, letting our software manage it um, for the Knox devices, we're doing a lot of work together on that, um, mostly in the market, meaning with the customer base. Um, Samsung also uh, is a partner of good technology, which we recently acquired. And so there, there, there are good things uh, to be done there in the market together, uh, but not exactly on the handset itself, no. Now, the Priv is very high end. Would you consider making a cheaper Android phone? Um, depends on the, uh, the, the PRIV, uh, you know, the, I guess the next three months, four months, the results will tell us. 
um, is this a good strategy? What we're, the strategy is to combine the best of BlackBerry with the, uh, with the best of Android. Um, if that is being well received in the market and it looks like that there is a good chance of that, um, then yes, the answer to your question is uh, we, we will probably still focus very much on the high end, probably more a little bit about uh, mid-range or so. We'll probably have another phone like that uh, coming out in 2017. Oh, fiscal year 2017, which is calendar 2016. Interesting. Okay, so you mentioned on the call that you're going to be unveiling software related to self-driving cars next month. Would you consider partnering with companies like a Tesla or a Google or an Apple, companies that are already working on self-driving cars? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd love to do that. Uh, we, had a, uh, we had a couple of... Um, partnership announcement um, in the last couple of weeks regarding this um, and um, you know not not the big names that you laid out um, uh, we work with Google on a number of areas already um, and you know I love to I love to extend this um, our QNX technology our software platform actually work with the Apple car uh, strategy as well as the Google and 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 love to be able to work with Tesla um, you know and, and I'm sure my I'm sure the folks are talking to each other by now. Um, so, so we we are very much um, involved in many cars industry, uh, many car vendors, uh, providers. Um, we're in 250 models car, and our software is currently in 60 million cars running around. And so, you know, it's obvious, you know, it's natural for us to step into the next generation of automobile.